Hi again, everyone. Today we're going to look at a simple example from vector calculus that involves taking the curl of a vector field. Now, here's our vector field here. And we're asked to, to take the curl of this vector field. Now, curl is one of the basic operations in vector calculus. Now, loosely speaking, um, we can think of the curl of a vector field evaluated at a point to measure how the field uh, swirls around that point or rotates around that point. Okay, I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end, but this example is just, just simple, straightforward, let's just take the curl of, of a vector field. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, The curl of a vector field involves this NABLA or DEL operator and the cross product. Okay. Now, this DEL operator, it's, it's a symbolic vector. And it is the following. Okay, so what, what we're going to do, we're going to get this del operator to operate on our vector field through this cross product. Okay. So let's write this as we would a normal cross product. We're going to get something a little like this, so we write the components of our del operator in the second line. And then the components of our vector field in the bottom uh, row. Okay, so we're going to expand this and produce a new vector field. Okay, so with these um, three by three determinants, um, essentially expand along the top row. And remember that we're not multiplying uh, here. These differentials are operating on the, on the various functions. Okay, so... To do this, what I do is I expand along the top row. I recognize that I is in the top row and the, and the first column. So I cover those, that row and that column up, and I multiply by the determinant of what's left over. Okay? So I will be multiplied by the determinant of this 2 by 2 uh, expression. Okay, so that's cos x, y, z, and x, y squared, z cubed. Okay, so now I move over to j. j is in the top row and the center column. So I cover those up and I multiply j by the determinant of what's left. Okay, now don't forget a minus sign needs to go in front of this J here. A lot of people forget the minus sign. Um, X, Y, Z. X, Y squared, Z cubed. And finally, we move on to K. K is in the top row and the third column, I cover those up, multiplied by the determinant of what's left. Okay, 
So it's going to be something like d, dx, d, dy, x, y, z, and cos, x, y, z. Okay, so now we've broken it down to two by two determinants multiplied by the uh, i, j's and k's. So remember with two by two determinants, we do a cross multiplication. So it's this times this minus this times this. But remember, we're not really multiplying here. These differentials are operating on these functions. Okay? So ddy of this will give us 2xy z cubed minus d d z of this. So we get x y sine x y z. Okay? So then we move on to the next one and expand that one as well. So it's again the, the, the cross multiplication, but remember we're not really multiplying here. So ddx of this will be y squared z cubed minus ddz of this. Okay, and lastly we continue on. ddx of this minus ddy of this. So that's going to be minus yz sine xyz minus xz. Okay, so we've produced the curl now, the curl of this given vector field. Notice that it's a, a vector field itself, okay? But I guess a good question is, what does the curl measure? What, what is it? Well, like I said at the beginning, curl measures the tendency to uh, swirl around or rotate around um, a, a particular point. So, for example, if we were looking at the curl at the origin, so x equals zero, y equals zero, z equals zero, this will be zero, this will be zero, and this will be zero. So in other words, the curl of this vector field at zero is the zero vector. Okay, so what does that signify? Well, if f was, say, the uh, velocity field of a fluid, then there would be no rotation around the origin. So there would be no whirlpools at the origin because the curl is the zero vector there. Okay?